Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another week. <clears throat> this is going to be for uh, our next assignment. And this one's called uh, The Establishing Shot Using Track Mats. And what we're going to do in this assignment is create an establishing shot consisting of a live action uh, video clip. And we're going to composite an additional uh, element or two in there. The results should look convincingly realistic. Um, an example would be to composite futuristic buildings into a shot of the MJC grounds and have a spaceship fly through the scene. That would be kind of interesting. Um, so let's get started here. We're going to create a new project here, our uh, composi new composition settings. Uh, we're going to do 640 by 480. This time we're going to do 15 frames a second. And our... Uh, Duration should be 10 seconds. So that's what we're starting with. So a minimum of 10. If it goes beyond that, that's okay. So we got 640 by 480, 15 frames a second, and a 10 second duration. Click OK. Okay, so in my project, I'm going to have a spaceship going through uh, the scene. And I'm going to composite that into my scene. So I'm going to go into Photoshop and build a simple one here real quick. So we're going to do a new file, 640 by 480 is perfect. And I'm going to double click the background layer just to unlock it here. And let's go ahead and create a new layer here. And uh, I'm just going to create a simple little spaceship here for this project. So I'm going to click there. And let's make the first layer here black. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. Control D to deselect it, first of all. Control D. And let's right click on the layer one there, and we're just going to duplicate that. Click OK. And I'm going to fill that in with more of a grayish layer. Something like that. And let's go ahead and fill that in. And then we're going to transform that, edit, transform, scale. And here, if I just click this handle and try to drag it down, notice there it also gets the sides too. It maintains the aspect ratio. So in order to just reduce this vertically or you know horizontally if you want, you hold down the shift button and then drag down. And notice there it's maintaining the horizontal length. Okay, so about there maybe. Maybe about there, hit enter. And I'm going to grab my move tool now and just move this up into here. That looks pretty good right there. Okay. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to color that white. So grab my paint can and then again um, if I want to reduce that, edit, transform, scale. Again, hold down shift. I can drop this down a little bit. Hit enter. And I grab my move tool if I want. and I, Or I can just leave it the where it, where it is. That looks pretty good like it is. So um, the other option would be to just to move it up a little bit. Something like that. Okay, and then I'm going to create one more layer. And I'll just make a little... Uh, area for the aliens to hang out in. Move that up just a little bit, maybe about right there. And let's move this down below so it's behind the other stuff here. And let's just go ahead and fill that in with a red color maybe. Let's grab the paint can, there we go. Control D to deselect that. That looks pretty good as a basic spaceship there. And now what we can do is we can merge these layers into one. So let's go up to Layer. We'll do Merge Visible. All the visible layers that were there are now one layer. And so now we can take this layer right here, right-click on it, do a quick export as a JPEG. And I'll just call this Spaceship. And a 
it's going to be a PNG, right? And let's go ahead and find that folder uh, where I want to save it. So click on my desktop here. And let's go to beginning After Effects, AE10. It's going to be a PNG, so go ahead and click Save. And uh, instead of closing, I'll just right click or just minimize that, sorry, and just make sure it's in there. Okay, so we'll go into our folder here, A10, and there it is. There's our spaceship. So that takes care of that part of the assignment. And I'm okay, also another thing I want to do is I want to um, use some buildings in my shot. I'm going to composite some buildings in my live action scene. So again, I'm going to do this in Photoshop. And I'm actually going to make a mask here to do this. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So again, we'll just do a new file. 640 by 480 is fine. Okay, and then, uh, so what I'm going to do is bring a picture in here. And let me find that picture here. Of some buildings that I want to use. Here's a skyscraper and this is probably going to be, I'm not sure how big this image is, we'll see here. Well that's not bad, so that's a pretty decent sized image there. And let me bring this up, I'll increase this. And uh, let's say I just want to use maybe these three buildings right here. That would be good, yeah. So I'm going to hit enter, okay, and uh, and notice here my object here is if you look at this layer, it's a smart object, comes in automatically as a smart object. So if you want to get rid of that, there's a little document symbol in the corner here on the layer. Just right click on it and just choose rasterize layer, and that no longer makes it a smart object. And then what I'm going to do is just isolate these three buildings and just use these. Um, so the first thing I want to do, I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm going to instead of right, well, I guess I could right click it and just choose duplicate layer. Click OK. And then on this one, again, I'm going to build a mask here so I can mask out all the other elements. So again, the first thing I want to do is go up to um, image adjustments, hue saturation. I'm going to pull the uh, color out of it. And again, I can adjust the light or darkness of it. This will really help to uh, when I do the next part of it here. So I'm going to click OK. And uh, I can even bring up the uh, brightness and contrast too to help this. Again, I'm trying to go for a black and white image here. So if I increase the contrast, notice there how much darker the buildings are than the sky. That's good. Click OK. Now if you remember when we create a mask, the lighter values, the white values on the uh, in the mask will uh, make the elements show up. The dark or black values will mask everything out. So it, after you do your um, desaturation of the image and you adjust the brightness and contrast, the next thing you want to do is isolate the buildings. And we can do that by zooming in on it. Let's zoom in on it really great detail. And I'm going to use the um, polygonal lasso tool. You also have a magnetic lasso tool, but I like the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm just going to go along the edges here to create a path that will isolate this set of buildings from everything else. Okay, and this you can work pretty quickly with this thing. And this is pretty easy when you have straight lines like this, like on the building. So, And notice here when I drag this up, watch the canvas will move with it. Okay. And it's great for straight lines, right? So polygonal lasso tool is really easy to use. Um, and in some of these you might need to create a few points here, especially if it's kind of rounded off looking. Here we go. So don't be afraid to uh, make several points, especially if you're trying to create a more rounded looking surface here. Well, let's just keep going with that. 
That looks pretty good right there. Okay, and then we're going to isolate this part. And we're going to do this part as well. I think I'll just cut off that top piece there. No problem, right? Okay, just do the best you can. There we go. Now let's do a little more here. Okay. So far so good. And then just keep dragging across until you get to the edge here. Okay, so it looks like we're going to stop about right here maybe. Okay, and then we're just going to cut off the rest of that. It's okay. We're just going to do it. Okay, all the way down to about the floor here, maybe about right there, all the way across, straight line, that looks pretty good, you want to join the where you started, right, you want the lines to join, there we go, now once you get your selection going, you can zoom out, Alt to zoom out, and you can see there that it's all being selected there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill that in with uh, white. So I'm just going to go ahead and change my foreground palette color to white, grab my brush tool, and since this is a selection, I, will, I don't have to worry about the borders because I won't go outside the selection borders. So I can make this as big as I want, go around and make this all white, for my mask okay and now that that's all done I can take this selection area go up to select and choose inverse and now I'm selecting all the outside area everything outside the white area and I can change that to black now and I can just paint black over the rest of it and there's my mask right easy peasy okay so now I have this uh, information here in in terms of a mask i'm going to go ahead and name this layer mask okay and now i can deselect Control d to deselect all of it and now the, here's how you do it this is really easy what you do is you uh, grab your magic wand make sure you're on the mask there you select the area that you want to preserve which is the white area here make sure that's selected and then all you do is go down to the layer where you want to apply the mask and click on the little mask icon on the bottom here, the layer mask icon. It's a rectangle with a circle in the middle. Click that. And notice there it automatically applied my selection area. You have to make sure you select that area first or it won't do it. And now when I turn this off, notice here my buildings are isolated. And then now I can take this image here and I can export it as a PNG file, right? So go up to File export quick export is PNG I'll call this skyscrapers PNG is selected that's good and notice here I'm already directed to the right folder here click Save okay and again before I close it I'll go and check and make sure it's in there and notice there I've got my skyscraper PNG and I've got my spaceship PNG so I'm ready to go with my uh, images that I'm going to composite in my live action shot. Okay, so I'm back here in After Effects. So now I'm going to bring in my uh, video clip. So File, Import, File. And in 10 here, here's my video clip. It's about a 7 minute clip. But for this purpose of this assignment, I just need the first 10 seconds or so. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and drop it in. And notice there how zoomed in it is because it's much higher resolution than my file size. So I'm going to zoom out here a little bit and then I'm just going to um, scale that down a little bit. And let's scale it down about to there, I think. Maybe up just a little bit. Oh no, that's good. Maybe right there. And then let's go ahead and unclick the chain here. And then I'm just going to scale it up. So I'm going to stretch it a little bit, but that's okay. OK, 
Okay, and that's good there. So that's my clip there. So I'm going to use just this first 10 seconds here. Now you can hear the audio. So you can see it, or you can hear that it's a live action clip. You might see the clouds moving there a little bit too. It's not, there's nothing really happening in the scene, but it is a video clip and I'm going to, it'll make it really easy to composite some elements into this and have a, what I'm going to have, what I'm going to have happen is I'm going to have a spaceship come from behind the water tower and fly out here so we can see it. So it looks like some kind of alien invasion here. Okay, so once we have our video footage all set up in here, um, the next thing we're going to want to do is save a single frame out. And all we need is a single frame to make our track mat. Okay, and our track mat's going to be kind of like a mask that we made in uh, Photoshop, for example. So let's go ahead and take this frame, and we're going to save that frame out. Okay, so we've got... Um, we're going to go up to Composition, Save Frame As, choose file and right here output module we're gonna let's click on Photoshop here and let's make sure that we are resizing so click on resize we want to resize to 640 by 480 so I checked resize make sure you're getting the same uh, resolution as your AE file right or your After Effects file so I clicked resize and now it's going to resize it to 640 by 480 uh, we can leave it as a Photoshop sequence, or you, here you can change it to JPEG if you want. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> it just makes sense for me to leave it in Photoshop since I'm going to go in there and edit it in Photoshop. So click OK. And then Output 2 right here. Let's just name this Track Mat Photo. And it's going right to my 10 folder with all my other um, files for this project so that's good so track map photo it's a Photoshop file click Save and then the last step of course is to click the render button and it'll render out just like you're rendering a video right but it's just a still clip so if you click in here and look there's our track map photo so now we can go into Photoshop here and we can make our track map right and there it is and you can see up here in the uh, canvas information, it's 640 by 480, so that's good. And uh, basically, the process for making our track mat is the same as when we made our mask. So that's pretty easy. So we're going to zoom in on this. And we're going to grab our polygonal lasso tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and start making my uh, track mat here. Or my mask, so to speak, right? And so again, you don't have to be totally accurate if no objects are going to pass through this area. But I want to be as accurate as possible so I don't run into any problems. Okay, right there is good. And then right here is where we need to start really getting accurate here. Straight lines are good, so those are easy. We bring this around. Again, using your polygonal lasso tool, you're just going to make your... Uh, your mask here and this is going to come to about here I think and right here just take your time there's no hurry um, and we'll go up here let's see let's go back here this way and then straight up again right here we're going to go out here a little ways. So I'm just going to go around the lip of the top of the tank here. Um, I'm not going to worry about the railing up above because no objects are going to pass through that area. Okay, and just take your time. I notice here if I just keep moving the polygonal lasso tool, um, Photoshop will track with me here. Okay. Let's move this. Oh, there we go. Just move your mouse and it'll, everything else will get out of the way. Okay, and we're going across here. There, if, notice there, if I move beyond the screen, Photoshop will move it for us. There we go. 
Okay, and just follow the line here. Okay, straight down, right there, and then what we're going to do is just go outside the uh, go outside the, the screen here or the canvas and go all the way down, all the way across, and then just make sure your lines are joined, they're connected all together, and now look, you have a selection area, so. That's the area that we're going to preserve. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. You can see there my line. I'm preserving the, the ground and the tank and everything else will be kind of clipped away. So you, then you'll see the live uh, clouds moving behind it. Okay. So with that selection area now, I can just uh, make sure my foreground set to black. Grab my paintbrush. I mean, sorry, I want to make... So with that selection, I want to make sure my foreground is set to white. Grab my paintbrush, and I'm just going to, I can make this bigger, right bracket tool. And I can just paint within the lines and uh, make that white. Just make sure you cover everything there. Okay, and all that area is white. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, again, like we did before, go up to Select and choose inverse right or shift control i to select all the outside area and then change my foreground color to black and just fill that all in in black and that's basically my mask right okay once you get that filled in you're pretty much done and uh, so i'm going to hit control d and then I'm just going to save that out. So I'm going to go up to File. I'm going to choose Export. Um, Export As. In this case, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Quality, I'm going to turn it up to the highest, 7. 640 by 480 is what I want, right? So click Export. And then here, I just want to make sure it's going to the right folder, and it is. So that's going to be my track mat. Not photo, but it's just going to be my actual track mat. So I'm going to get rid of photo and just call that my track mat. Click save. And before I close that, I want to make sure it's in there. And there it is, right? And that's what I'm going to use when I do my Luma mat in After Effects. Okay, I'm back here in After Effects now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that track mat in here. So I want to go ahead and grab that. JPEG, drop that in here. There it is. So let's go to Comp 1. Here's our video, right? So we'll just, we can rename this if we want. Right click on it, choose Rename. We'll call it Track Map Video. So we know that's the one we're using for this. Okay. And then we're also going to bring our Track Mat down here. And the Track Mat's going to be above the video, right? You see it there. And then again, if I uh, turn the eyeball off, you can see the water tower right there. Okay. So what we do is, uh, again, we leave the track mat up on top here. And what we're going to do is just assign a uh, track mat here to the video. Okay. And we're going to assign it to the one just above it, which is the track mat here. And what this will do is, the track mat will um, preserve all of this part of the video while masking out this part so you can actually put something in between these and it'll look like it's coming from behind the tower. Um, so let me show you what that means. If we go to track mat video here, we're on the video layer underneath, we are going to make sure that our uh, track mat menu is up here so click toggle switches and modes if they're not showing up click toggle switches and modes and right here where it says track mat we're going to assign this to the track mat just above it so click here and we're going to choose track mat jpeg and here you notice there that's what's called an alpha mat 
okay? Um, that's not really what we want to use, right? So, and let me show you the difference. If you use an alpha mat, it's not going to work because uh, Luma mats work on the uh, values of black and white. So just click this box and change it to a Luma mat. And notice there what's happening now is, is that the Luma mat is preserving this area that's white. Remember the area that's white. It's preserving that area while blotting out the rest of the photo right here so you can see the video underneath. Okay? And now the question is, how do you bring the video back, you know, that's behind it? Well, the easiest way to do that is to take your video here and duplicate that. So Control D. And notice there, nothing's happening, right? But if I take this, if I turn off this Luma mat on the duplicate, watch what happens. If I choose no mat, choose no mat there, now you can see that the track mat's working on the layer above it, but you can still see the video behind it. So that's a great way to trick people into thinking there's something that can exist in between these two areas. Okay, so that's kind of how it works with the track mat. And so the next thing we can do is we can start putting in some other layers in between in there. So for example, let's say I want to bring my buildings in. So let's go ahead and bring those buildings in that I created. The skyscraper PNG, if you remember, we're going to bring those in here. And watch what happens when I put this down in between these. They sh that shows up right here, right? But when I move it down below here, notice there it appears behind the water tower, which is what I wanted it to, wanted them to do. Okay, so you can actually uh, composite some buildings in there as well. And let's make that smaller even while we're at it. We can put them kind of off in the distance, right? So let's scale that down. And we'll bring these over here. And so it looks like we're in more of an urban landscape. Okay. So that's kind of interesting, right? So right there we have some skyscrapers in there. We could even uh, turn off the chain here and we can make these uh, wider or narrower. Let's, let's make them a little taller while we're at it. You know, something like that, okay? And so there you can see now if I turned off the, uh, if I turned on the track mat, that's all you would see. But if I turn this off, you'd see the skyscrapers in front of it. So the track mat allows you to composite images in there and move one behind the other. And it's just an easier way of making that happen. And then the last image we're going to bring in there is the uh, spaceship, right? So we want to bring that in. So let's bring the spaceship PNG in, is there, in there as well. And we'll put that one in front of the skyscrapers. And you can see there it is, and it's going to come out from behind the water tower, right? But let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller while we're at it. So spaceship transform. We're going to scale that down a little bit. That looks a little more convincing. And let's add some effects to it while we're at it. Matter of fact, let's do this. Let's put the spaceship up top for now so we can edit it, right? So we're, And then we'll move it back when we're done. So let's scale that up a little bit more, and let's see in the next part if we can add some effects to this to make it even more space-like. Okay, so now that we have the uh, Luma mat set up correctly, again, I brought the spaceship up um, to the front here, to the top of my layers, just so I could see it. Now I want to address the spaceship. It looks kind of um, rudimentary and cheeseball, and uh, I'll try to make it less cheeseball looking. <laughs> So I'm going to go to Effects and Presets here, and I, pl I did play around with some effects, and I found that the stylized ones were what um, worked for me. So the first thing I decided to do was um, I decided to try this color emboss effect. So let's, let's drop that in. And here I can bring up, maybe bring it up just a little bit just to darken the top of the the ship, but whatever you do, it you you sacrifice something for the other, I guess. Um, 
so I, I could do that or I could just leave that alone. So I decided, no, oh, that's not really effective. So then I tried plastic here. Well, actually, let me show you what I tried before that. I tried hex tile. And notice there, it just completely changes the design and there's nowhere to blend it. So, um, so that didn't do me much good. So I could kind of change the shape of it maybe like that. But I, I thought it still had a better design like that, so I got rid of that. Uh, then I tried Kaleidoscope. <laughs> and not happened in there too much, right? Um, it's a neat effect, don't get me wrong. But um, it's, it's kind of limiting in terms of how it's how to... I can't blend it, that's the problem. Um, I wish I could. Um, but it is a really neat effect, right? It's really trippy. So um, instead of doing that, I stumbled upon plastic. That's the one I wanted to show you. And I liked plastic because that's more of a surface. You can see there it affects just the surface of the uh, ship. So if I go down to surface bump, I can change the uh, surface to one of these uh, other layers. Um, Oops, wrong one. Um, spaceship there, and you can kind of see some of the changes there. And you can you can actually bring up, change these uh, levels here too to kind of mess with it just a little bit. So it just provides a little bit of a luminance on the surface. It's hard to hard to see it really, but okay. So I added that just to add a little surface uh, contrast there. And then the other one I thought was interesting was Threshold RGB. So I dropped that one in. And notice here I can actually play with uh, the green, the blue, and the red colors here. Um, I thought that was kind of fun. Um, something like that where you get a little bit of a complementary color scheme or close to it. I thought it was kind of interesting, so I played around with that. Um, you can do some inversions here, too, but none of those really grabbed me. But I like the little green that I added there. So I did that, and then uh, you can also blend it with the original if you want to uh, kind of make it subtle or outright. Now, I kind of left it like that, but the one that really got me was CC Glass. That's the one that kind of brought it over the top for me. So when I brought in CC Glass, I started playing with the surface. Um, again, you can change up the look of it. Uh, luminance was kind of cool. Uh, lightness didn't do much for me there. Blue kind of brings out the top a little more. And green didn't do much. So I, I, I think I liked Luminance or blue the best so I played with that and again you can uh, play with the uh, different controls here and, and really influence the shape of it in a way that makes it kind of interesting so I thought that was kind of a sleek uh, look right there you know something like that displacement is kind of cool too you can really add some neat effects that way too um, so anyway that Glass had probably the most dramatic effect of all of them, you know. Um, even changing these here, the bump map, really makes a difference in how the overall machine looks, you know. So glass really had probably the most dramatic effect, I would say. And uh, probably just playing with the displacement more than anything so I kind of liked that that's kind of a neat look um, not quite where I wanted but that looks pretty good right there and just play with playing with the softness kind of helps too 
and bringing out the color there on the bottom was kind of interesting. So I liked that. I thought that was a good look. Um, let's see what else. I'm going to try one more thing with posterize and see if I can get some kind of uh, luminance on there. And that, that's not working too well, but that's worth a try there. So you can just hit delete on in your effects if it's not working. Um, glow might give us some interesting results too. Yeah, I like glow actually. That's kind of cool because you can actually go up here and change the intensity, which is kind of neat, or bring it down. Um, you could even uh, you could even keyframe that to go back and forth between you know this and this. So maybe I'll do that in the end here. But that's kind of a neat effect. And, and so that looks pretty good as my ship. So I'm going to leave it that way. And then we'll do the, uh, we'll do the uh, sound and, and make this thing move through the scene here in the next part of the video. Okay, so now that we have our ship <clears throat> kind of uh, set up, you know, um, the next thing I'm going to do is move this thing through the scene. But first I want to make it a little smaller. It's a little large since I brought it up. So I'm going to bring that back down. Maybe start it off kind of small. And then we'll have it grow. So let's go ahead and put this thing back down just in front of the skyscrapers there. And what we'll do is have this thing maybe come down. Maybe from behind. Sort of drop down then move into the scene. Then have it finish maybe in front of the water tower. You know, something like that. So actually, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So it looks like it's coming from uh, farther away. Maybe have it come in that, like that. And uh, then we'll move this thing around. And I thought, the problem I'm going to have is, how do I get it in front of the water tower? But I think the solution would be to duplicate this layer. Watch this. I'm going to click this layer, Control D to duplicate it, and we're going to put the duplication up above everything else, and we're going to put the duplication, as a matter of fact, off screen over here somewhere, um, and then we'll activate it when we need it. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to open this up. We're going to bring the opacity down to 0% on this. Actually, we don't even need to do that, and I'll show you why here in just a second. We'll leave the opacity at 100%. Just to make sure it's there. That's good. And then we probably are going to want to resize it too while we're at it. Since we're going to be in front of the water tower. So let's go ahead and get that scale right. Maybe as it comes down, it'll scale up to about there. And we'll just have it hover here. Something like that. Let's make it a little bit smaller maybe. There we go. And let's turn snapping off on the top of the screen. If I turn snapping off, then I can kind of freehand move it, which will be nice that way. So we'll leave the duplicate off screen here, right? And then what we're going to do is have this spaceship. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's go ahead and go back to our other spaceship here. And we'll have this thing come from behind the water tower and get a little larger as it's coming through here. Okay, so we're ready to start keyframing our position keyframes here. So let's go ahead and uh, start. We're going to start with the spaceship that's going behind the water tower, right? So this will come in. Maybe we'll have it come down here. Actually, I like it coming down from the top. So let's go ahead and keyframe that position. And then maybe about four seconds into it, something like that, we'll have this thing come down. Um, and then maybe hover there for a second till about five seconds and then we'll have it kind of slowly go off screen. Something like that. We'll have this layer start over here too. Okay, so let's see what we have so far. We've got the spaceship coming down. Well, I like it so far. That's good. And then we'll have then the, for the rest of the time, we'll have this thing come in front of the, uh, water tower. 
So let's do scale change too while we're at it. While this thing's coming down, it should be getting bigger too. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the scale. And maybe about right to about right there, it's going to be the same. Control C, Control V. And then as it comes down here, it should be getting a little bit bigger. Maybe right there, it'll be a little bit bigger. And then as it gets down here, it'll be a little bit bigger. And then as it comes off the screen there, we'll have it come up a little bit more there. And by the time it's here, it'll be about the same size as the other one, right? Okay, so then we'll go over to position here and make sure that that thing is off the screen there. Okay, so let's take a look at it now. So we've got the spaceship coming down. Get bigger. Let's try that again. Okay, I like it. Uh, I think the position could use a little adjusting here. So here here maybe maybe we want to start this thing more over this way something like that now moves a little bit fast there there we go maybe it was just uh, rendering there we go now it's moving at a nice even pace I like that now it's getting there we go now it's getting bigger and then again with position here on the last position keyframe, we want this thing to be over just a little bit more. I'll kind of off the screen. Okay. Well, let's take a look at that rendered. Good. All right. So from there, and then now what we'll do is we'll activate the top layer. Okay. So this one is above the track mat, so it's going to show up in front of the water tower, right? So again, we'll do a position. So here we'll keyframe the position from the beginning. And then once this thing goes off the screen, it'll still be in that position, control C, control V. And then we'll have it maybe come out. So at about seven seconds, uh, this one will be coming out here. And we'll just have it hover there maybe for a few seconds. And have it go down. Have it go up. Back down. Back up. And then maybe fly off the uh, screen. Okay, something like that. So let's see what we have so far, and let's see if it looks pretty convincing there anyway. Perfect. Okay, let's, let's see how it looks. It's coming down into the scene. It goes off, and then it comes out in the front. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, so something like that can work. Again, if you take the if you take an object and you want to make it um, look like it's going in front of the whatever you have preserved in your track mat, you would just duplicate it and put it above the track mat and then have it come in later. Or you could do an opacity change if you needed to instead of a position change. And so there was one other thing I was thinking might be cool, and that is to put a lighting effect on the spaceship. So I'm going to do the original here. And one of them is called Light Sweep. So I was going to take that one and add that to it. And then what, what you can do with the Light Sweep is, uh, well, let's, let's take a look at it. So what we can do with the light sweep, and I'll show you how that might be effective, is 
we can uh, basically change the direction of it. We can keyframe the direction of it. So if I click here, okay, and I bring down, bring this out, I can do a rotation here, maybe halfway, and then do it another halfway here. Same thing, go here, do a rotation, about halfway, again about halfway here. Okay, and then do that on the top as well. So we go ahead and go up to the spaceship on the top. Same thing, we're going to apply a light sweep to it. We're going to start here with uh, in the beginning. And we're just going to keyframe the direction. And that direction will be the same till about right here. So, um, where are we? Oh, yeah. Control. Well, here, all we have to do to make sure it's in that position is just make a change here and then go back to the beginning there. That's good. And the same thing as we get here. This thing will do a, a half a rotation. Then a half a rotation here. Then finally again. One more there, and then again as it goes out, we'll do about a quarter turn, something like that. Okay, so let's see what we have now. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, you can see the light kind of moving through it. That's kind of neat. I like that. Okay, so it just kind of gives it a little bit of a, a flash. It gives it some life. Okay, so now the last thing you might want to do is think about your uh, sound effects. So I do have some sound effects here that I'd want to bring into this. Um, so again, go back to the project window. We're going to import our sound. I'm going to leave the sound of the outside too for the, from the live clip, but I'll just adjust them. And uh, here's a sound right here, an MP3 sound that we can use. I think we have two sounds there. So let's drop that one in. See if I can get that one. Uh, maybe I have to drop it into the project window here. So let's do that. Well, it's not letting me for whatever reason. Oh, because I'm doing the import window. Yeah, done. Okay, so we can bring that one down. Okay, so we can have that one come in maybe a little bit later. We'll figure that one out here in just a second here. Maybe right as it's starting to come down. Very close there. Okay, and then let's bring that other sound in too. File, import, file. Uh, let's see, I think it was space sound, yeah. Click import, again, grab that one, drop it in. Okay. And so that's kind of a good uh, setup there. Now, we can, we can also do some fade-ins, too, that might make it a little more interesting here. So let's go ahead and um, we'll keyframe this down a little bit, maybe to negative 25 or negative 30, something like that. And then by the time it gets to about here, maybe we're 100, we're back up to zero. Okay. Zero is unity gain. That doesn't mean it's off. It just means... You're at what's called unity gain. Um, so you're going to get the best fidelity probably at unity gain here at this point. Let's see how that kind of fades in. And we'll do the same thing with the, uh, with the other layer here. Let's fade it in a little bit. So we'll go to our audio here. And again, 
we're going to be down uh, quite a bit here. Let's do negative 41 here at this point on this one. And then by the time we get to here, we'll be about at unity gain, right? So we'll bring that back to zero. Again, just click in there and put zero if you're having trouble. And then now we should hear a gradual fade in of the audio. Okay. Uh, another thing you might want to try is getting the, uh, the scene here a little bit darker. Okay, so let's start with the back one here, the track map video here. We're going to drop a brightness contrast on there. And we're going to bring the brightness down. We're going to make it a little darker just to make it more dramatic. That looks cool right there. And we're at about negative 93 on the brightness. So let's do that. And then we'll go up here to this video, do the same thing. Drop the brightness contrast to about negative 93. Right there. And then skyscrapers will do the same thing might be too much but we'll try it so everything's a little bit darker and the reason why I did that is because I want to show you how the spaceship would look in a darker environment there. so you can see now it really stands out you can see the lighting effect <laughs> I think my, uh, my adjustments for the brightness contrast are a little much, so I'm going to go back to the videos here and go to um, the brightness contrast. Instead of negative 93, we're going to bring it up to about negative 79, maybe. So again, same thing here. Go to effects, and instead of negative 93, we're going to go negative 79. Same thing here. And just make it a little bit less. Okay, so that's basically uh, how you do a Luma mat. You basically want to uh, take some live action video, save out a uh, still frame from that video, make a uh, mask in Photoshop, fly that mask back into After Effects, and apply it as a Luma mat above your video layer. And uh, that's basically uh, the whole purpose of this assignment, is to successfully apply a Luma mat in a scene where you're also compositing some different elements into the live action clip.